Asa, uh, fools. Asa, uh, dudes. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be working on the bug and actually doing something to the front, which you can probably tell by the title of this video. But before that, we need to get some drinks handled real quick. Obviously got some monster in here, but you know, it's two o'clock. Can't do one of those. Not trying to be working on the bug too late. But, oh man, we got that bootleg LaCroix, you know what I'm saying? It's good stuff right there. Kirkland, baby. But in all seriousness, I think I should update you guys on a few things. I actually just finished school. Um, I took a summer class, so I've been kind of busy the last few weeks, last five weeks that the course has been going on. But that's done now. I actually have a summer, so we can focus on the projects and on the actual business side because I am trying to get merch for you guys. Um, I've been working on a lot of different designs, and I've been doing all the steps to get um, Wings World to be a natural business. And I'm working on getting the equipment for clothing right now too, because I'm going to try and do it all myself. So that's in the process, so that's coming, so look forward to that. Start saving up a little bit of cash to be spending on some Wings World merch. But besides that, things have been pretty normal. I haven't picked up an actual camera in a while. Let me know if you guys think if the audio is any better. I did do a little modification on the back of this mic because I did notice we were getting a lot of wind noise. So if it's any better, please let us know. Um, I'd like to know what you guys think. As you guys can probably notice, I'm standing in an empty garage right now. The tube chassis pre-runner actually left earlier today. Uh, so we got a clean slate in here. Let us know what you want to see here. We have some stuff lined up as Christian hinted at in the end of the last video, but I'm not going to say anything to that. That truck will be staying outside while it's getting paint prep. It might come on, come in here for paint eventually, but for now that'll be out and we'll have potentially something else in here. So I'm not going to go into depth on that. That'll be its own video. Today we're here for the bug. So uh, off camera a while back, I lifted the rear of the thing two inches and that's done. There's basically two independent torsions on the rear and it's basically like a splined axle so there's a spring plate that holds your rear suspension together that slides onto that and i basically pulled that off rotated it down one spline which is a two inch lift and put it all back together so that only took about two hours i didn't film that because it was pretty easy it was not that complicated so that's done but now the car is at a full stink bug so we need to get that fixed and bring the front up my plan is to cut and turn the beam so basically what that involves is the front there's basically leaf packs in two of the tubes in the beam which you'll see later and what you do by cut and turning the the beam is you cut out the center section that has a pinch bolt that holds that leaf pack together and you rotate that section and weld it back together and that'll in turn rotate the whole suspension system and bring the front of the car up so that's what we're going to have to do my end goal for this car is to run a coilover on it um, which will be fine because you don't even run those leaf that leaf pack I don't know what the actual name for it is I call it a leaf pack because that's what it kind of looks like but with a coilover you don't run that you run what's called a push or a through rod and that pinch bolt and everything's not even used so we can mess with it however we like because it's not going to matter in the end game while the beam is off I want to add some gussets to it potentially as well um, but before we get into any of that I need to actually get it out from under the car and inspect it and make sure it's worthy of doing anything Here's how the car is sitting right now. You can tell the front of it is sitting pretty low. We don't got a whole lot of clearance right here, um, but out back you can tell that I raised it. So we got a lot more space right here. And you can see the rear tire has some positive camber on it, which I'm not a huge fan of, but in order to lift it, you basically have to do it with these swing arm axles. It isn't like the newer ones where it's a lot less camber change. These ones have a lot of camber change, so nothing I can do there. That's how it's gonna have to be, but I'll live with it as long as the car <laughs> handles well. Um, so I'm going to set you guys up on a tripod and then we're going to pull this whole beam assembly out from underneath the car. Well, that escalated really quickly. Um, as you can see, got the whole front of the car <laughs> torn apart. Um, we had to pull the gas tank to get access 
to these guys right here. We could have probably done it from underneath, but it would have been a lot more difficult. And then it was these guys right here that really would have been a pain. So just pulling the tank was more practical. It's funny because I just filled this thing up not too long ago. So the tank is completely full. So we just have that sitting over here. No, got a screwdriver just blocking the fuel. OSHA approved. It's good. I wouldn't worry about it. But that's out of there. Um, got the beam out. You can see how this car's it's mostly surface rust but it's not really bad rust in here so i'm thinking i'll be able to prep all this and paint it and get it all cleaned up um, just have the other tie rod sitting in there because we didn't get it off the spindle yet the spindles are just sitting here i didn't really want to pull these because i didn't want to have to pull the brake lines and re-bleed re -bleed those so that's just all going to sit here now so here's the beam in all of its glory you can see this thing's got quite a bit of surface rust but i think it's salvageable there's no real cracks anywhere or holes or anything so it's in good shape it's just a lot of surface rust so i'm going to spend a lot of time prepping this i'm going to replace the bushings as well definitely going to replace the shocks because those things are done probably just clean this up maybe replace it i doubt i'll replace that um, but i'm excited <music> All right, it is a new morning, and as you can tell, we've already started working on this beam. Got a little monster motivation. What do you think about that, dude? Uh, I don't know. These <laughs> beam things are kind of weird. Yeah, what we did this morning is pulled off the arms, cut off the little bump stop mount, since we're not gonna be using that anymore, um, and then pulled the actual springs out, and then, what else did we just do? Pull the shocks off. Cut the bump oh, stops off. Yeah, well yeah, I just, I just oh. said that. Oh. Um, and then we also cut the sway bar off because we're not gonna be using that anymore. So this thing's pretty much stripped. It just has the box on it still that needs to come off. I called Tyler over at CarTech this morning and got some bushings for this. And then I also got new little Zerk fittings, wherever they are, for the beam itself. So that'll freshen everything up. The next step is gonna be degreasing this thing and actually getting it to where we can work on it. So that's kind of today's agenda. What do you think? Are you gonna get it all done today? Everything you just said, yeah. Yeah, we're I don't not. Know, I don't know if we'll get it cut and like welded back together. Probably not. But we'll get it all cleaned up for sure. Okay. So run up to O'Reilly's right now and get to gre get get to degreasing. Get to degreasing. Yeah. <laughs> so I went ahead and degreased everything. This is what I was actually using right here. Um, just some gunk engine degreasers from O'Reilly's, and I got most of the oil and grease off of all the parts. There's still residual stuff, but that's gonna all get. Uh, basically cleaned up when I used the little wheel right here. A little wire wheel action will do do some good. You can see there is a little bit of residual on here, but for the most part, she's all clean. forward I probably look like crap but it's been a few hours I've been grinding away on this beam and let's check it out you can see we got a pretty nice metal finish there is some pitting on here from the rust but um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get rid of that but it's not terrible but tomorrow probably gonna prep this a little bit more and then the goal tomorrow is to have this cut and turned in the middle and then uh, maybe I don't know if we'll have all the gussets on but start with the gussets on it as well What do you think? What do you think? What are you thinking? What are you thinking? So I drew a center line right here with a paint pen. That way, once we actually cut this, we know how much to rotate it and we can measure off those points. Um, and then I just took two pieces of painter's tape here and got them as straight as I possibly could. And that's gonna be our cutting line or our marker to cut. So we've been thinking about a few ways to do this can't use the bandsaw because it won't fit in there and the blade on that thing is already toast. Um, don't want to use a chop saw because we don't think we can get this without grinding into this or cutting into this. And it, usually that that blade on the chop saw can flex a little bit so it won't be perfectly straight. So we're going to think or we're thinking we're going to use a cutoff wheel. That's going to be our best bet here. So time to get over there and do the hardest part of this thing which is actually cutting it. A um, little nervous but should come out pretty good.
tricky part is going to be getting up in here because that's not really going to work. So, um, might have to bust out this sawzall, which I really don't want to do because I hate those things. What do you want to do? What do you think is best? Sawzall. Sawzall? You want to do that? <laughs> You're can. an idiot. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Dude, I can't do this. Right now. It's pissing me off. <laughs> you do everything fine off camera, and then once that thing is busts out, <laughs> like everything is just is crap. No going back now. Oh, well, we've really done it now, boy. <laughs> oh, uh, Look at that thing, just caked in grease. Yeah, so that's what you're working with inside of here. That's where the torsion pack or leaf pack, whatever you want to call the thing slides through and then it gets pinched wherever the hole is um, with the little bolt right there and that's what keeps everything in place. So the idea behind this is this will get rotated. The beam's like all disconfigured right now, but it'll get rotated and in return that'll rotate where the leaf sit, which will rotate where the suspension um, sits at right height. So went through, cleaned everything up. Now I got this thing mocked up in there, which is to magnet and another type of magnet. Um, you can see here's the line that we had. This is a quarter inch up now, and we got pretty even gapping on both sides. So we're gonna try and weld it up right now, and we're gonna see if it pulls or anything weird. Um, and then depending on what it does, we'll either finish tacking it and then weld it, or figure out another way to hold this thing on there. Got a nice V in there. Way better than going just flat, right? Yeah, way better. There is a couple spots, like you can see here, there's a couple gaps. You definitely don't want, if there's already a gap there and you're putting a bevel in it, you don't want to go too much, like compared to like right here where there's no gap at all. Because if there's already a gap and you start putting a bevel in it, you're getting the two pieces really thin where the gap is, and then you'll just start blowing holes through it. So the bevel here is definitely not as big as it is over here where it's actually touching, so just kind of depends on what you're doing, but. unless the gap's really big you don't have to do any circles or anything like that literally just watch the puddle get bigger and then just start pulling Dragging. it down and it'll melt right into whatever you're trying to do and it looks like it's it's laying really flat yeah it'll that's, lay pretty flat that's good thanks son yeah yeah that's really good sat in there literally perfect that's what that bevel will do if i didn't add that bevel it'd be booger yeah it'd be booger fest it wouldn't be good yeah no i'm happy with that super happy with that oh my it looks so good Update, Chris and I have been working on this thing and got the lower half all done and got that re-welded up in there. I've gone ahead and just cut out this template and this is going to be for right here on this side. Um, it'll fit up somewhere near that. That's not perfectly lined up, but you get the picture. So that's done. I can cut that out with eighth inch right here and that's what this will get plated in. I was talking to Christian about the beam and you can see the welds on here are patchy and there's some spots where it's not even welded. So we're thinking we're gonna come back through here and just buzz these in real quick and get everything fully welded. So I spent a little bit of time getting that piece cut out and fit it all correctly and I'm super happy with how it fits on the beam. You can see we have absolutely no gaps anywhere, which is perfect. And up here where the circ fitting is, um, I notched it a little bit because I don't, or we need to be able to get this out and back in if we ever needed to replace them, which I am getting new ones. So I just notched that to clear that. If you look closely, I got two Little things marked right here, and that's gonna be for dimple dies. This is the first time I've actually marked something for dimple dies. Christian told me how to do it, um, but I'll explain it real quick. So first I found the center line this way, and then I found it going through, and then that's our center point on the whole plate. And then from there, I just marked out a certain measurement that I came up with which is to what? each side, which in our case is right around two and a quarter um, out on each side. 
And that's gonna be for this guy right here, this temple die. So this little kit that we use in our Harbor Freight press. And so I'm gonna have to get these drilled. I marked them with just a little crappy punch right here. This thing's lasted forever, but it's not that great. You can see the little divots. So that's gonna line us up perfectly with the drill and I'll get that cut out and then throw it in the press or not cut out, drilled out, and then we'll throw it in the press and get the dimple dies in the plate. Dude, Louie Rapido, dog. Show them how it goes together. Yeah, sure. So, you get two pieces within the set. What set is this, Christian? Where'd you get this? Um, Amazon, or? No, it was definitely not Amazon. Oh, well, is, is it the it company that makes? Yeah, swag they make a lot of stuff for these Harbor Freight presses. But um, this will go like that. We want to dimple it in. So you look at the bevel on this guy and that'll um, determine where it's pushed in and we want it pushed into the beam because we don't want it to look out uh, just look kind of weird so we're going with this slide that together slide that guy on the other end hopefully straight not like i did yeah you don't want to think that thing because and then so you can see it's up to each other in the plate yeah and then we'll throw it under here like i'm acting like an expert this is like the first time i've done first this. time he's ever dimpled out something i'm kind of walking him through it so All right. And the plate's gonna bend. But we'll show you how to bend it back. No, Straight. you'll, yeah, you'll, when it squishes it flat, it'll start yeah, to come back. See just it like coming that. Back. So, how much pressure do I wanna go? As much as you can. Full pressure? All of it. <laughs> so, that's pretty straight. You can tell, I've got good seals on this little press here. Yeah, the oil all over the place. That's oil. great. All right. Let's see how that one came out. So <laughs> you definitely don't want to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so there's our dimple right there. A nice even thing, and you can tell piece of metal's <laughs> still perfectly straight. So that's good. Yeah, I brought it back out. Um, so we'll do this other side, and then we'll get to tacking it up on the piece of uh, or on the beam, and then we'll weld it. I'll weld it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna weld it. This guy's gonna weld it. First time Let's welding see. on something, one of his own projects. So that'll be good. Yeah, for the most part. Yeah. You ready for this, dude? Yeah, I am a little nervous, but you got I think it. I'll do fine. Definitely start here, so because there is grease right here in the zerk fitting, there's not really much you can do about that. So if anything does end up coming out of here, it'll be after all this is really heated up. So start here, get that done. That way, this doesn't get contaminated at all. So this thing's tacked. You almost ready? Yeah, dude. What do we got? Yeah, hit this with some anti splatter spray. There we go. Now, the ASS, ASS, ASS spray. <laughs> the ASS, brother. All right. All right. Now we're ready. Let's get her. started cleaning up here but it sunk in right there yeah we well, started in a corner but why why did it sink in there is that um, no it's because that's where it did dip down so you either just didn't follow the dip okay. or uh, but look you can see right here you're pulling a little bit too far like keep it a little bit closer together okay It does. I didn't even hit the plate right here. Yeah, but look, look at where you started, and look at where you're at now. Looks the same to me. Nah, it looks way better. Hey, hold on. Yep. Little that, caterpillar. That was like the best part. <laughs> but did you did you feel it just working right when you were doing it right there? I think the issue up here was I was too far away because when I got closer, I could see the plate and the tube a lot more. Yeah, you'll be able to like see a, it before a lot I better. couldn't see it, and that's why it's like. Yeah, once. You just got to make sure you can see the tip of the gun, you can see both pieces of metal, and you're close enough to where, like you can see up here, you did it again, you got a little porosity in it, but mm -hmm. that's because you're way too far away. Yeah. So, so like... yeah, just stay close to it, but have enough angle on it back to where your head's over here looking into it, and you can see exactly what you're doing. Okay. That 
it's just a little bit wider because I was starting circles. Which there you go. Getting way better. All right, so I just got done welding on that plate onto the beam, and I'm not very happy with it, but it's a good start, I guess. Um, it leaves a lot of room for improvement. So you can see, here's what we got. Started up here. I went back and did a pass, repass those two parts just because I didn't like it, and started there, went down, and then the corners. Um, you can tell I started to get a lot better down here. Up here, um, I was too far away with the gun and the spacing was too big. You can see, that's Christian's little one. He, he did one and I washed him and that one's really good. Um, so I think I was getting a little bit closer down here, definitely getting better. Um, still need to work on keeping things straight because it's a big uh, squirrely line right now. So I don't know, I'm not happy with it, but it works. Before I started welding this other side, I just wanted to show you guys the fitment on it and how it works around the steering box on the beam. So you can see we got this little piece all made. Again, it's rounded out right here for the little zerk fitting. Rounded out for that, and then see, still stuck with the single dimple die. This was kind of my plan all along because I know I knew I couldn't get that whole plate over here because of this. So I wanted to do a single with just an angle on it, and I think it came out pretty good. Definitely getting better with making these pieces. It took about 20 minutes, whereas that one took probably like an hour. Um, so definitely picking up time and getting a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna try my best to weld this. I'm gonna tack it in the four corners like before. I still gotta prep this, this piece a little bit um, before I do that, and then I'm gonna remove that to do it. So I got this other side welded on there, and it's a lot better, but I still have some room for improvement, which, I mean, this is the first real stuff I've welded on, so it's not gonna be perfect. And I'm kind of a perfectionist, so this just bugs me. Um, but you can see this is where we started over here. That was like the first welds on here. And we got that. And then this is probably the best ones on here, um, which I just laid down. On this angle, definitely getting better. Um, still not the best. None of this is the best, obviously. But over here I had a problem. You can see I had to repass it. Um, but I was way too much on this plate and not enough on here. And a lot better on this side. Um, more in the joint. So. I'd say this is pretty good. <laughs> like I've said a million times, definitely room for improvement, but we're getting there. I really wanted to do this on my own um, rather than just have Christian weld it. If I had him weld it, this would have been perfect, but then I would never learn. I want to learn how to weld. So got to start somewhere. Um, I'm happy with this, happy with this. <laughs> so we're starting off the new day with a bunch of parts for the build. We did get a package from our boy Tyler over at CarTech, which is with a K. Someone in the comments was saying that they couldn't find the website because it's with a K, it's not a C. Um, so we went through Tyler as always. We got some 3 8 wheel spacers for the rear of the car since the tires are rubbing on the actual swing arm back there. So that should fix that issue. And to go with that, we have actual studs and nuts for the rear. And then for the front, we got these bushings for the front beam and then little Zerk fittings for the front beam as well. Um, we do, I know we say this every time we get a package from Tyler, but we have a coupon code, which is WINGSWORLD. Uh, make sure to use that and you'll get a discount on your order. When you're checking out on Cartex website, there should be an option to check like a consultant. And make sure to choose our boy Tyler because he set this uh, coupon code up for us. So we want to show him some gratitude and support those who support you. So by doing that, you'll give him a little bit of commission on your order and that'll help him out a lot. Uh, but besides our Cartex order, we did get a bunch of paint from the local Ace. Um, some standard this is what we use on everything satin canyon black and then for the beam i wanted to replicate steel it without actually using steel it so we have satin granite and i think this should be pretty close as far as work today you can already tell i got these prepped so i did that i got to deal with this as well i'm gonna have to just clean it up and then over here we got our beam i finished welding this thing still doesn't look as good as i want it to but we're learning um got all the little joints in here and yeah, just finished up everything. That's probably the best one. The Christian said that was the best one. If it would focus. But yeah, making progress. That's as far as I've gotten today. I had to go to the bank for like an hour, so that took a good chunk out of my day. It's already almost three, so my goal for today is to get all this prepped and then painted and then have this whole beam reassembled tonight.
Well, 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 just got this beam wrapped up. It's like 1045, so I've been working on this thing for pretty much all day. But let's go through it real quick. Got this nice gray beam. Um, had a little mishap right here, so I gotta touch that up. But new Zerk fittings on here. Um, really cleans things up. And then moving over here, got the new bushings, got the arms on there. The hardest part of getting every, everything together was getting the actual torsions through the center section. That was a pain, that took quite some time on the top and bottom. But you can see we have a pretty aggressive angle on these arms here. Uh, it's gonna be fun getting those uh, spindles on there, but I was looking at photos and this is pretty common when you cut and turn the beam. So I was worried at first, but now I, I know it's normal. So we're just gonna have to figure out some way to bring those up in order to get the spindle on. But we'll figure that one out when, when it's time to do that. Over here, got the nice steering box. This came out really good. I just went through and prepped it with that wire wheel and then painted it black and it did wonders for this thing. Left this raw just to have a little two-tone action. Um, new hardware here and then new bushing. I had this in one of the last videos but didn't get around to installing it so I'm gonna do it now while everything's apart. As far as filming goes, I'm probably not gonna be filming tomorrow just because I'm gonna be prepping and painting under the car where the beam's gonna go. And that's boring to watch and I know this video is already pretty long so I'm gonna do that off camera. And the next clips you'll see is this beam actually going under the car. As you can see from those clips, the car is back on its own weight. I got the beam back under the front of this thing. I uh, got the wheel spacers put on the rear. And then I hooked up the steering column to the steering box. So that's done, but there's no tie rods in it right now. So this thing's basically just a rolling chassis right now. Uh, gas tank's not in it either, just so we can get to all the stuff for the tie rods at a later point. You can see how much lift we actually added to the front of the car. Uh, got a good amount in here now. Before it was only maybe two inches. So it definitely brought up the front of the car. It actually sits pretty level now, which I'm pumped about. It was full stink bug before, but now we're looking pretty good. The next things that I have to do on this car is I'm actually going to make my own steering using Himes and just tubing as tie rods. I'm not going to use the old stuff because it's just wasted um, and I want to build something custom. I don't want to just buy replacement stuff. So I'm going to end up doing that. And then I also need to get extended brake lines because after looking at these and putting on the spindles and everything, they don't, the tires really don't even want to stay straight. It'll um, stretch the brake line, which isn't good. And they're old brake lines, so they're shot anyways. So I'm gonna have to get extended ones probably from Tyler up at CarTech and then put those on, do the tie rods, and then this car will actually be ready to drive. So I'm pumped for that moment. I do really quickly just want to say thank you to Tyler up at CarTech for getting me these parts and for Christian for teaching me how to weld and letting me use his welder. Um, that was really nice of him. I look forward to using it in the future too. Uh, on some more stuff. That's gonna be it for this video though. I know it's already gonna be really long, probably around 30 minutes, maybe a little bit more. So I'm gonna save the tie rods and everything for a separate video and then we'll actually go drive the car. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.